My first feeling around it was some reservations, if I'm completely honest. My first reaction really was horror, because I'm technophobic. I couldn't get over how you couldn't have a personal face-to-face -face talk with somebody about something so sensitive. I thought there was sort of something fundamentally wrong about not being in the room with the patient. Well over um, half of the staff felt that they really didn't think this was an appropriate use of technology, that the assessments wouldn't be good, that you'd be unable to do a decent risk assessment. You know, one of the big things with psychiatry is building a rapport with the patient, and I thought it might be a barrier to that. I think the, the main concerns I had about it was not being able to see the full body, wasn't being able to see the body language. It's not going to work, it's going to be really difficult. How I'd manage if they became very distressed or disturbed. Um, and then yes, obviously therefore as an outcome of that, would the assessment be as good? Once the video link was up and running at the Horton Hospital, we asked staff who are just seeing patients as normal to discuss their findings and discuss the patient with the consultants back at the JR so they could practice using the video link. That was a really useful way to get started because we were doing it with consultants that we knew and knew us. It was quite nice for seeing actually how I, you know, I would come across to a patient, so I sort of enjoyed that really. It was much nicer than a phone call. I could sort of see Kathleen, you know, querying what I was saying and having a little think. Initially quite strange, but it, it made me feel more comfortable with it. Of the 44 patients we saw in the initial trial period of 12 weeks, only 20 returned feedback forms, but of those 20, 90% rated their overall experience as excellent or very good. After a couple of minutes of speaking to the patient and getting used to the system, you're immersed in the patient assessment and I didn't really think about the technology too much. At the beginning, you know, you make it very clear that if at any point the patient wants to stop and have a face-to-face, -face, then you're not taking any options away from them. I came away feeling very positive with the outcome. It all worked really, really smoothly, so all my fears were removed. They're actually seen in a much more timely fashion and patients just want to be seen, have a decision made, be able to get discharged home. It's much quicker. You can deal with things in a much more proactive way. Not having to drive over to the Horton and being able to conduct an assessment within 10 minutes of, of receiving a referral for somebody. After someone's, you know, had an acute stressful episode or been suicidal or self-harm, that's quite a thing to carry on waiting in ED for us to get up there. I think probably my biggest issue within the whole project was overcoming my own anxieties and judgments, really. You know, obviously there is something about, about how you are relating to a patient and how you're empathising with them and how you're listening to them. You can do that on FaceTime. The fundamentals are still there. I genuinely think it's brilliant. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I'm amazed, amazed at the um, way that patients have engaged with it, the way ED have engaged with it. I'm a very old school nurse could not believe this was going to work. I thought I'd let you trial it and see what happened. Um, but I have to say, for the group of patients we're using it for and for an emergency setting, I think it's been excellent.